for the very fast spinning bunch, uh, I cut a little bit shorter than normal section because it's so close to the bend, if uh, the hair is too long, uh, this bend section is going to interfere the uh, hair movement. Okay. Once, twice, and gradually squeeze, and uh, then let go. And uh, then four more turns, and uh, that secure the uh, the hair. You're going over the same spot all the time, though, right? Yes, that's okay. important. Yeah. And the uh, first punch, uh, you just put a couple of turns of thread right in front of the hair. And uh, right now, I don't push much because you can move it so easy and uh, you're going to do it too much, so rather than uh, too much, uh, just I don't do it. Just uh, then put the head cement, and uh, I uh, for this purpose I don't like the uh, water based cement or whatever. Uh, just I use the those uh, conventional, those uh, stinky head cement seem to me work better. And uh, uh, the reason is, uh, well, unfortunately, you, that you uh, break the thread. And usually, even the, uh, you damage the thread, uh, you uh, couple of turns of thread and the head cement, that head cement secure the uh, uh, even damaged thread there. So you don't have to start all over from the beginning. You can st restart where you damage the thread. You can do it. So and uh, like I told you, uh, this amount uh, quite often people ask me, but uh, whatever you can handle it comfortably and but uh, uh, far too <laughs> too few numbers of us dear hair they won't spin nicely and so so uh, I don't know what that some Jack Dennis book was saying, some uh, pencil size uh, amount or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, but, uh, but uh, I think I, whatever person feels comfortable, that's what that. couple of turns and uh, then slowly squeeze and uh, then it go and uh, it spins by itself and uh, and that uh, then this time you started pushing a little bit and uh, put your left hand fingers, just hold the uh, last punch not to move. 
and bring the thread in front of the hair and a couple of turns. You can apply it to the thread. And if you don't break the thread, well, you don't know how, what the maximum uh, tension. And uh, try to uh, tie in the middle of the deer hair. And uh, uh, the other day I tried the uh, elk hair instead of the deer hair. Uh, elk hair is a little bit tough and uh, Okay, uh, the point I started that my thread, that's, that's, a, that's a section came, so I'm going to stop spinning the deer hair. Do you not put glue on there now? Yeah, I will. And, uh, well, you could use the uh, scissors or most cases I uh, use a razor blade to shape the, or you, you have to use the uh, two-sided, two-edge uh, blade and uh, I know it's not easy to find this type of razor blade nowadays. Uh, all you have to is just push the blade, blade against the hair and uh, See, now, static and that. So, it is a pretty messy. Well, this is a fairly small fry now. But, uh, well, so schema or those types of dragonfly news. And uh, if you like to tie the dana or much larger one, then you could even use the uh, size six or size four hooks and uh,
and uh, tie my tie with some uh, weed guard or legs. So. And uh, uh, I think I, I'm going uh, to use uh, more than a dozen. And uh, if you think too many, well, you can clip it off before you f fish. So. Well, you could spin the, uh, these hair or you could tie just up underneath uh, those uh, wet, wet fly pattern. Huckle. Well, there, there is an entirely different way, but uh, uh, to tie the, uh, uh, these legs, well, that's going to take a uh, few hours, and uh, so I'm not going to demonstrate. <coughs> and so now the weed, weed guard or legs and uh, on, so I'm going to put the uh, head section. Typically, does it take you to do each fly? Well, when I tie, I, you know, spin dozen at a time, so... And uh, when I uh, fish this fly, I use the uh, most cases uh, type two sinking line, and uh, full sinking line, and that's and uh, I fish the uh, near the bottom, and uh, uh, but it seemed to me this uh, weed guard or. The buoyancy of the fly reason. Very seldom I snag the weeds. 